Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you a technique called no line watercoloring and I'm going to be using the Tea Together stamp set which is in the new occasions catalog. So for this I am going to be using the soft sea foam uh, color so I'll need the ink pad, pad as well as the re-inker. I will need an aqua painter with um, obviously some water in it and a paper towel and also just pop that out of the way I've set up my stamparatus with my image on it already and I'm working on watercolor paper so the first thing I want to do is just ink up my get my ink pad open so I'm just going to take away my watercolor paper and I've just got some of my grid paper in my stamparatus and I'm just going to stamp it up ink it up and then stamp it off once just lightly and then I am going to stamp it onto my watercolor so that gives me a fairly light impression you can see there I just try and get the handle a little bit darker so I can actually see what I'm working with but you'll see that it's quite a light image. I'll just pop that aside. And the rest of it is just our coloring. Now I'll just see if I can zoom in a little bit. Uh, and I'll try my best to keep in the frame. It's very hard when the camera's above my head. So I'm just going to pull, because all, all I want is, um, if you can't get a really good inking in there, there we go. So the first thing that I want to do is, is I keep layering my colors. Um, I'm just using the one ink pad and I want to put down a little bit of water in my lid here just so that I have a really light wash, like a really wet watery one. I'm just going to wipe that off so my brush isn't too wet. And then I'm going to start with um, the body of the tea uh, pot. And I'm just going to, so you can see it's really hardly any color down there at all for the first one. And I'm just going to start along the edge of the little bit of the stamp that I can see. I'm just going to stand up and make sure you can see it. And I'm just sort of flicking the water into the middle of the body. And all the way in. And then it's easier for me to just swing my image around and then I start at the bottom and do the same thing. So there's very, very little colour going down at the moment. But what this will do is allow us to keep a little bit of sh or like a little bit of shine or something going on in the middle of the so just dry in the middle of the like in the body here so and then I'm just going to blend that through very very light at the moment I'll just bring it up so you can see very very light and then I'm just going to keep on adding a little bit more so I'm going to drag a bit of my color into that watery mess just to make it a little bit darker now and I'm going to do the same thing so just go around and then just flick in up color again when you find that you don't have so much turn the image around And then just to blend that again I just sort of wipe off my water pen so that there's no color on it just so that I don't end up with hard lines okay so I just keep on adding until I get the depth that I want now I'll eventually get to the stage where I run out of ink so hence the re-inker 
and this allows me if I just let that dry just a smidge this allows me to get a little bit deeper with my color so I can pull in more into that little watery pile there and then just go around but the more I go around the closer I want to keep to the line so I don't want to extend it in too far now so it does take a little while um, but it's really quite relaxing so if you enjoy if you enjoy coloring um, you know, it's sort of a, a good thing to melt away the stresses try not to get your little finger if your image is wet try not to get that into your image because the last thing that you want is smudges from your little finger okay then I'm just going to squeeze my pen a little bit so it's just a little bit watery and remove any excess ink that's on there and then just blend that through just with plain water okay so you could leave this now and move on to the next part I'm just gonna stand up make sure I'm all good bring it up show you doesn't look like much at the moment okay so the next part I'm gonna do is the spout actually I might do the underneath so I'm gonna try and come back and make sure that I've got some watery ink again and we're just going to do the same again with each part and then the spout so a wet watery and I'm just going to leave the opening of the spout um, you can just see on the image that there's the inside of the spout and this is where you get tricky and you might end up with your finger in that so you can either let that dry or just try and get your hand out of it <laughs> okay so just dragging more ink in to get a darker palette and I'm just going to come around the bottom area of the spout It's school holidays here, so I don't know whether you hear that or not, but my <laughs> husband's just living in his car and he just revved it up outside my window, so hopefully you didn't pick that up. <laughs> and my squeaky chair that I keep moving around on. Okay, so that's my spout. Okay, and then the handle I found a little bit tricky because I wasn't um, sure of where my shadowing should go. So just starting off again with the wet wash okay again it's just the same thing again just bringing in more color now I'm gonna come around that way I think okay so if your brush starts to dry out just grab a little bit of watery the, the light wash again and just sort of blend those together so that you don't have that line
and I only pick up very small amounts of ink so I don't know whether my I think my ink pad's not in the frame so when I'm picking up I'm only picking up like tiny tiny amounts Oops. okay now I've got the lid to do standing up and making sure I'm in the right frame so I don't want to have to start the video all over again and I'm not very much of a conversationalist when I'm coloring so apologies for that <laughs> for those who can color and talk at the same time that is awesome <laughs> okay so for my second layer I'm going to start from the top just sort of bring them into the sides and it helps to like your colors sort of blend a little bit nicer when you've got a little bit of water on your um, on your image on your card and some of it I mean I'll, I'll sh hold it up to the camera but you can see that the edges aren't crisp but you know when you're doing no line watercoloring that's what you're going to get now you'll notice that well I hope you can notice but because the image is stamped so lightly but around the back here is also I've left that so I've left the, the tip of the spout and I've also left behind the, the lid at the top of the teapot so I'm just going to come in straight with um, straight dark ink I'm not actually going to water it down because we want that to be a little bit darker in there and so you might have to put down a few layers of um, the dark and there's the pump all these household noises that you don't realize until you're actually starting to film so hopefully the microphone's not strong enough to pick it all up okay I've run out of I've run out of ink so I'm just going to grab some more okay so that's a rough finish there but I'm not going to stop there now's the time where I'm going to start coming in and deepening up some areas so I'm going to take uh, I want my pen a little bit watery and quite deep in color because I'm going to come in and add some extra shadowing around the edge and under my scallops here I've sort of lost lost a bit of my scallop shape so I can come back and define them and because what's happened you can see the dark lines there is now I need to make that a bit watery and then come in wipe it off put my water and blend it out so that's the great thing about using the watercolor paper for this because it's very very forgiving and you can just keep putting down layer and layer sometimes you lose a little bit of your, your definition but I think it adds to the the style of watercoloring that we're doing I 
again we want to sort of blend in those watery areas because we don't want them we don't want um, harsh lines and I'm just going to come under the teapot here again we want a little bit of shadow under there okay and then on the base of the spout and a little bit around the edge of the, the lid Now we just need to do the, um, actually I need to get another drop of, another drop of reinker. Just to add a little bit more detail to the handle. So that handle is sort of giving me a little bit of grief so I'm just going to get a little bit of a wet wash going again and see if I can blend that out just ever so slightly. I think what's going on is here. I'm going to try and make it look like it's sitting behind. Okay, so I think I'm done. So once that's all dry and settled, it will look a little bit different again. I'll just stand up and bring it up. Oh, I hope you guys, I hope that was in the screen. So it is a little bit um, uh, not defined around the edges. I'll try and, but once you've cut that out, there are um, framelits to go with these in the celebration catalog. Um, it actually looks like a really cool image to color. It's a fun one. So, but you can keep playing around. You can keep adding a little bit more shadow when, um, if you wanted to. Again, once that's dry, it will look a little bit different. Um, so that's it for me. You can just, just keep on playing. I might fiddle with the handle a little bit more. Um, thanks for watching. I will have uh, a card up on my blog very shortly and I'll do a little tutorial, a speedy video showing the rest of the card um, on Friday on my blog. So thanks very much. Bye.